Well, today is one of our most sought out interviews because so many people from TV Ontario really credit themselves, uh, or credit you with their success. Um, Clive Vanderberg has said uh, these words, I quoted this, I owe Ruth Vernon my career. And Jed Mackay has said that your influence uh, deserves the Order of Canada. These are, these are wonderful compliments. Others who credit you with the unique ability to manage a team, uh, giving them the freedom that they need without compromising corporate and administrative goals. Some have described you as tough and intense, but in the same breath they say that you were the best boss that they ever had. Yeah, nice. You were the ship driver for children's programming at TVO from the mid-70s to 90s, and stories abound saying that educators and TV programmers would buy material straight from TVO, sight unseen, if your name was on it. It's quite the compliment. And your credits include the executive producer on most, if not all, kids programming from that era, including shows like Today's Special, Join In, Read Along, You Can Write Anything, Calling All Safety Scouts, Cucumber, Math Patrol, Book Mice, Read All About It, and Polka Dot Door, and the list goes on and on. We are so excited to have Ruth Vernon with us today. So thank you so much for being here and doing this interview. Well, thank you for being interested. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's great that uh, people are remembering these wonderful shows. Well, as we begin, give us an idea of who Ruth Vernon is and where did you grow up and tell us a little bit about your family and what things had a major influence on you as you were growing up. Well, I grew up in the beach, the real beach, because <laughs> I think you told me this was the beach, but it, this isn't, but out, out further. So okay. I went to Balmy Beach School in Malvern, and both schools had a lot of arts going on. I mean, I was very fortunate that the, the principal at the, the public school put on operettas every year, and so we got parts, we got to sing, and we, uh, we learned drama, and, and so those things I never thought would come into my life again. I didn't realize it would be an influence, but, but obviously it was. And then I went to Malvern, where apparently Norm, Norm Jewison went to, uh, to school, and Glenn Gould went to school, and uh, so that uh, we had a lot of famous people there, and they too were interested in the arts. So I think I was very lucky. But I just remember, I was telling Jennifer on, on the way here that uh, I remembered when we were kids, uh, we used to put on plays in our, on our street. We used to get the, th the thing, and we wrote the corny, corny corner scripts, but we did put them on, we charged the other kids in the street uh, sent to get, to get in, and, uh, but we, we did it and we had a lot of fun, and I guess all of these things, all, you never thought about them influencing your life, Sure. that they probably did, Yeah. and it, it was just like something we loved to do, and my, my mother took me to plays a lot, and she taught me to play the piano, and uh, so I guess there was art, but my father was very musical, so there were things in the family. We used to have big family parties and play charades, and the charades were always very unique and funny, uh, but nevertheless, I think that's kind of drama too, so that like all of those things kind of probably influenced me right from the time I was young. Were yeah. there any specific experiences that you had that helped create and form you as an educator and a producer, and, that, and made that person out of you? Well, I don't know. Of course, when I went to TV Ontario, I went in as an educator, so therefore that's what I was taking in. I was taking my my skills as uh, mainly uh, like primary at the time I went in. Was and that was where your training is, right, as a primary school teacher? Well, I in, in Canada, you learn to teach up to grade 10, actually, right. when you're going to, to, to the school. And so you have that wider uh, expanse. Uh, but never, it, it was something that that's why we went in. And, and I. I think I, I knew how children learn to read, and, and so I, I knew what we had to do to put it on the screen to, to help them to read, and, and how important it was for children to learn to read. It's the most important thing they almost have to, to do, so if we could help that. So we worked on it extremely uh, in difficult times because it was something we were all experimenting with, but with a lot of research and, and our caring, and then we we would take the, the programs out to watch children watch them. And one teacher told us it was a, an autistic child in the class. And uh, when I went in, she said, do you know that, that the first word that he ever said to me was from Read Along? Oh, wow. Yeah, and that. How did that make you feel? Oh, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> but it also made you work harder because you realized you were making a difference. And that's the, the exciting part that some child who might not have learned was helped by TV Ontario and, and some of the programs we were putting out. When you think of your life so far, what are some of the goals that you set out to accomplish 
and do you feel that you accomplished them? And which ones in specific are you most proud of? Well, I can't say that I ever started off with goals. I, I, I don't know if what they were. I, I, my parents taught us that we better be good, <laughs> that, 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 so that uh, you had to excel at whatever you were doing, and you had, you had to do that. But, but other than that, I don't remember thinking, my brother, when he was five, knew he was going to be a doctor, and he was. I didn't have a clue when I was finished high school what I really wanted to do. I was not sure. And I was going back and forth between being a nurse or a, or a, or a teacher or whatever. And my, my brother, who was already in medical school, said, look, you can't even stand the sight of blood, so forget it. So I went to teacher's college. <laughs> so that's how it happened. But I loved it when I got there, too. I did, I did like it. But it was not a goal that I had all the way through my life to be a, a teacher. I was not. I know you were telling me this story before when we were off camera, but why don't you share with some of our viewers uh, the story about how you went from being a teacher to becoming um, an educator and a, and a producer at TV Ontario. How did that come about? Well, I was uh, seconded. Uh, they were they were looking for educators to come in for a period of two years, and they would pay they would borrow you from your school board, and they would pay, pay your salary to, uh, from the school board. So that's how it was handled. And we we came in uh, not really knowing too much about the television part and how to deal with the producer educators who who didn't really want us there. <laughs> so so when two different uh, worlds, right? <laughs> two different worlds. But it turned out that eventually, I think what happened with uh, the, the producer, I won't mention his name because he was told, I was told he was difficult, and so that I'd have to learn how to handle it. So I got, got through it and we, got, uh, we made uh, some, pro some programs and uh, came in. And when we were educators, we also had to write teacher's guides. Right. So we wrote big teacher's guides telling teachers how to use the program. I remember that because some of the curriculum that would go into the schools that's would right. have those teacher's guides. And uh, t the teacher's guide uh, was very helpful for the, for the teachers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and eventually, because of what we would suggest, we started getting all this stuff coming into TV Ontario that kids had done. They made pictures and they did stories and they sent it all in. That? And that was really exciting, but I could also show that to the director. And all of a sudden, he realized that people were really watching this, wow. and it made a difference, even to him, who was kind of crabby. <laughs> but, but it was a, a very special thing. Did and that affect the morale of the team? Oh, definitely, definitely. Having this stuff coming in uh, from what we had created, and the, the teachers would write a lovely letter saying how much she appreciated and how it had made a difference for children. And so well, that was fantastic, it was. And so it motivated the director and it motivated us as well that we were reaching out and, and we had to write good guides and we had to make good programs. And that so children were worth the very best we could do. Yeah. Most people that I chat with talk about the early time at TV Ontario in, in many similar words, mm -hmm. saying that the thing that propelled them to do well is that they realized the influence. And really, you were in implementing, correct me if I'm wrong, a new form of media. Television had not been used as an educational. Um, and I think the unique thing mm -hmm. about the things that were done at TV Ontario mm -hmm. during the time where you were kind of overseeing mm -hmm. the children's department was you had material that was educational, that was researched, and that was purpose for education. But you know what? It was entertaining as well. And there was this crossroads mm -hmm. now where educational television didn't have to be some boring seminar and some lecture-based thing, but the incorporation of puppets, the incorporation of music and animation could now be used to, to educate young children. Exactly. And these characters were recognized everywhere. I mean, oh, yeah. they, uh, they saw a picture they knew of, and uh, they knew who Boot was. I mean, the, the characters in the folks in Pokeru, they, they, they uh, definitely know him. He was in all kinds of braids. And, we put him up behind you here. That's actually. right. That's it's, right. It's right yeah, but uh, it, Poker Dot Door actually was there before <coughs> I, I, I got there. Right. I, I, it was already uh, being produced and on air. So that was uh, that was one of the original ones that, that went on. But it was very very special too because of a Pokeru uh, that was on on the show. And, and today still is an icon for TV Ontario. The show is the show's off the air, but Pokeru lives on. Yeah, because that's true. We see him. Uh, we see him on advertisements, and we see him still dressing up and, that's, and that's doing right. parades. He's mm -hmm. really become larger than the show, mm -hmm. and is still today an icon for TV Ontario. Well, that's great. Well, um, 
I think we're going to take a moment to do a little bit of a set change. As okay. you mentioned before, you have your friend Jennifer Harvey here today. Right. And I think it would be wonderful to get both of you guys on screen as we talk a little bit more in detail about your wonderful careers at TV Ontario. Okay. That would be fantastic. And I'll, I'll sit back in. <laughs> we're excited today to be with Ruth Vernon. We've been chatting with her already. And we've added another person to the party. And this is Mrs. Jennifer Harvey. And I think the interesting thing that you bring to the table as we continue our discussions on TV Ontario is that you were a part of TV Ontario when it was called OCEA, but even before when it was just uh, a production company called ETV, and I think you mentioned 1968 was when, when you became a part of that. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved with ETV at the time and how that all came about. Well, I had been teaching down at the Institute of Child Study uh, here at the University of Toronto, and my principal, a man called John McInnes, was leaving, and I'd been teaching for 11 years, was quite interested to do something else. He, uh, he knew Vera Good, who was the uh, educator at uh, ETV at the time, and I think this was just year two of, of uh, educational television attached to the, um, um, of the Board of Education, wasn't it, or the Ministry of Education. And uh, he said, oh, Jennifer, they're looking for teachers up at uh, ETV. Would you be interested? So I said, well, why not? So he sent Vera along to my house. We sat on the Chesterfield. We chatted. She said, would you like to come? So I said, fine. And that was it. It's incredible. That is yeah, incredible. <laughs> it wouldn't happen today <laughs> that way. And, and you two have a, a unique friendship because you work together for, what, nearly 25, 30 years? Is, would that be? Yes. 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 And the friendship still continues today. You that, guys that, obviously true. still know each other. Yeah, we probably work together longer because of we read along. We, yes. we, we worked on that right from the right, very, right. very beginning. beginning. Mm. And wow. Yeah, so, yeah, we have a, lo a, lo a long time. Long history. Yes, we do. Well, yeah. when you think about when you arrived at TV Ontario, obviously a very creative time, obviously a lot of creative people. When you think about when you first arrived at TV Ontario, who were some of the people that made a considerable impression upon you? John Surratt, Bob Thomas. Yes. Yes. And just basically also the producers. I mean, when I arrived at TV, I can still remember, I got there, at, at ETV rather, I got there at 8.30 in the morning, a good teacher, you know, you get there early. Uh -huh. No one was there. I was sat, sat in an office and I thought, what do I do? But that was really the very, very beginning when people were, were talking over all the time how they could use television to make a difference in the classroom. And I think as Ruth said, the teachers didn't know the other side and the producers didn't know the scholastic side right. and so there was a lot of good discussion at the very beginning. You mentioned John Surrett. was there anybody in specific that influenced you when you first arrived that made an impression on you? I, I, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think because uh, I can't John Surrett was definitely a, a very good person to talk to. I mean, and what was his what was his role? His role was head of uh, s schools from grade uh, nine up for okay. high school. Uh, so then I eventually, I, when I became at the other end, at the primary end, doing the programs up to up to grade nine, the, I could if I had a question, I could always go to John and to ask. Vera was helpful yeah. too, but Vera was helpful on education only. Uh, yes. Vera uh, was not a person who really got into the dynamics of the television and what, what it can do to put across your message. And so that was a, a little bit different. I didn't find I maybe I got quite as much help from her, but... Uh, but it was the writers, really, the writers and the directors. That and I can't remember the one on my first one. It was on creative writing. But well, the one I, I, I had that I had, I had to try, try to influence, but he was influenced when he started seeing that children were going to watch. I don't think that it ever occurred to the directors at the TV editor that this is really for an audience and it's going to make a difference in somebody else's life. Yeah. It isn't just watch and you clap and, and you think it's a great show and it's funny or whatever. It isn't. It's important because it's going to make a difference. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the name Vera Good because that is another name that has come up frequently, especially when I've talked to Peggy Liptrot. Peggy Liptrot was one of the was the first uh, producer of Polka Dot Door and really helped assemble the team that put that show together. That's right, and, and Vera Good was part of that team along with yeah. Dodie Robb and Pat mm -hmm. Patterson and uh, Ted Connie Bear. And um, uh, she went on to say that, uh, again, just from an educational mm -hmm. standpoint, had a, had a big uh, influence. Now, many have regarded TV Ontario as a creative seedbed for programming in the 70s and 80s. In fact, the whole reason why we're doing this 
is because so many of us that are interested in history have such a vivid memory of these shows, not only because we saw them on television, but because the curriculum was so influential in the Ontario school system. And I can remember being a kid and watching Télé Français and oh, yeah. watching uh, Read Along and even watching Today's Special and, and watching these shows in the classroom. In terms of children's programming, um, you know, you both had a responsibility for this. How did you do it? What, what were your jobs and how, did, how does a show even begin to be start to put together back, back in the day? Well, uh, when you're at the ed education level, then somebody's going to tell you what the subject should be. I mean, they're going to say, I want a program for grades three to four mm. uh, on reading, or I want a math program for junior kids from grades. And, that, and that's eventually what I had to do as when I became the head of the thing. I had to make those decisions and what I wanted. But when I was just the educator, uh, then uh, you just had to, you had to think, what would when I was teaching? What would have got the children's attention? Mm. What did they really need more that than the teacher could do that the that the television is going to do? Mm -hmm. And how can you repeat? So if you re, the teacher repeats the word twenty two times and says that that's no John that's not that word it's this word and just say it over she can't do that twenty two times but the child can watch that television program over five and over. over and over he's not put <laughs> down it's not embarrassing to him to have to do that because all the kids want to watch and and so it's it's really special and so you're not you're making the, the child feel that he wants to and, and that it's fun and so it, it gave all of us as, as teachers a, a wonderful other thing to Side. use uh, that we hadn't been able to use before in the classroom. Now Jennifer mentioned that she came around 1968 when it was ETV. When did you arrive? And tell us a little bit about your journey from coming in. I know we talked earlier about how you were uh, brought out of the school board for a number of years as, a, as an educator. Um, but, but then you graduated to, to bigger and better things. Tell us about that journey and when you originally actually came to TV Ontario. Well, when I originally came in, I was seconded. That means I was borrowed from my school board. And what year would have that been? That was 68 when I came in. So you okay. must have been a bit before that. Maybe, yeah. yeah, because Se Jennifer the was already there. So, okay. Yeah, so uh, I, but I, I did know I, I came in 68 and I was told I was being bored for two years and that I would be a part of the prom. And we mentioned Bob Thomas's name. He was the boss that I would report to, and he was an educator. And, uh, and that I would have to work with the producers and whatever. And I was going to, it was a very fast learning curve that mm. you're put under uh, to be able to start working and realize that you no longer were just doing teaching in front of somebody. You were having to put something up there that is going to cause these children to learn what you want right. and what you want them to learn. So that's uh, how it, w it was. And it was, uh, I was there for the two years. And they act actually asked me to stay for the third year. Uh, I was one of the few that they did, but they did. But then I had another offer of another job back at the, the, the board I was with, and uh, they wanted me back. So I, so I left. But the next year I was off asked to come back to, to TV Ontario and I decided to do it because I, I thought perhaps I was I really loved it and it, it was something that I was missing once 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 I left that that fe feeling of that I'm doing something really special and that I can educate in a different way and I might reach a lot more kids if I do it this way then uh, which is quite true and uh, so it was exciting actually to, to, to come back and, and then eventually work my way up. Uh, I had, they put me into utilization where I went around the, the province talking to teachers and finding okay. out what they did uh, and saying uh, how television can help you and we also tra trained the uh, teachers how to make little programs of their own mm -hmm. so, it, so if they had the equipment they could use it. And uh, so that was an interesting part of the, the job that I had to span because the children's section was, has, was not quite ready to call themselves that. And so I had to wait about another year and then they put me in, in charge of it, yeah, which was great. And you were in charge of all children's programming for many years? That's right, yeah, that's for about 20 years. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. You know, so many personalities have had an influence on TV Ontario, you know, obviously both of you, but um, some other people that aren't with us anymore. Jennifer, I'm wondering, can you tell us your memories of Ran Eyed, the, the man who started it all, who, who started TV Ontario? What do you remember about Ran? I remember his appearance. I mean, he was a very dignified mm -hmm. man. He was a very, very kind man. 
He always knew you. He knew your name. That was amazing. He that always, makes a difference, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. He always spoke to you. He was always interested in you. I didn't have as much to do with him as Ruth would have done, but he was always an extremely courteous man, very interested in what you were doing to help children and in your work. Sounds like a good boss. Yes. What do you remember about him? Well, I, some of the things are very, very similar, but he was very friendly too. I mean, he was at mm -hmm. the top. He was chosen by the, the Premier of Ontario yeah. to head it, mm -hmm. so it was a real honor. And so we knew we, we had a top scholar yeah. because he had been chosen. But also, my boss, who turned out to be Al Fazan, uh, who was head when I got to be in the, in the job, uh, uh, he, Al had worked for Rand. So Al had... Been influenced by him. Right, influenced by him. And uh, Rand also knew Al so that like if, if something, if I, if you went to something and you wanted something special, you could probably get it through the board because you could go through the, the way that worked. You went through your Alpha Zan and, and all, and all the way up. And I'm up sure, in light of what your position right. became, you needed to uh -huh. get to know these relationships right. so you could navigate through right. petition. And also, Ren, I, I used to go. <coughs> Elwi was uh, head of what we call regional councils. We okay. had people in all the places around Ontario. And uh, so I used to go out with Elwi and have, having to speak about children's programming. Oh, very nice. And so that was used to be, used to be fun. And so that was like something that uh, the Ren started. He started the regional councils, and uh, he he loved everyone loved Elwi, uh, and and so that was it. But every place you went, you were learning something too. Like, really? I mean, it it was like a a wonderful experience that you never would have got still in one classroom because no. you, you got to meet all kinds of people they told you what they liked about the program or they what the kind of program they wanted or what they needed and we got because we were involved I, you know AIT agency for instructional television no. in the states well that was their their big their their big agency and they they produce programs too but they st started wanting us to do co-productions with them wow what so, an honor. Yes, so we went down back and forth uh, with uh, our person who was in charge of the technical part, Ma Maggie Stratton, and I would go back and forth and we produced and co-produced a lot of shows with, with the Americans. You know what, I remember reading that in Ranide's memoirs, and I also remember reading how much of an encouragement it was when they struck that big deal with NBC for educational distribution of television yeah, shows in the, in the early 1970s and how that was such a large affirmation of what you guys were sowing into and, mm -hmm. and, and doing. Um, tell us about the late Ted Connie Bear and your memories of him. Obviously, very much... <laughs> well, probably not Ted, because she would have worked with him more. Ted was just two, two uh, offices down from me. Oh, he really? He was great, yes. He, he was so much fun, wasn't he, Ted? He, he in those, was. Yes, that's right. He, he was a really lovely man and so passionate about his... Um, polka, uh, polka, no, but that is the only show that Ted ever did. Did, yeah. was polka dot. And he, he owned it differently than other people that had worked on it, from what I understand. Like, he, he very, very much wanted it to be the very best that it could be. Well, I, I would imagine that <coughs> Peggy Liptrot did too. Right. And, I think they all do. And, all and those Joan Soloviev was also yes. involved in, in that. And that the series was bought, the I, the concept, not Pokeru, but the concept was bought from an English show. Right. Uh, like uh, another person who worked for Vera was Terry Bamford. And, and, and Terry uh, went over to England and he saw this show because, and Vera had been told she was going to have to start producing one. Hmm. children's show because Sesame Street was coming out and she was going to have to do it. So T Terry came back with the concept, Vera looked at it and she bought it. So that, that concept, but Pokeroo was invented by Peggy and Ted and, and whoever, were, you know, like a whole lot of yeah. people. Jody Robb and Pat and, Patterson. That's and right. Them, they, yeah. So they made the show different by, by introducing Pokeroo. It's very uh, interesting in terms of like you said, how much of a hybrid it was, because that's very much the way that Peggy mm -hmm. explained it, that there were, there were rights that they bought for the concept. Mm -hmm. and, and there were things that they retained, you know, the show was called Play School, yeah. oh, was and, that and, and they had, they had a bear, and they had a Humpty and Dumpty, oh, yes. and they, they, had a, they had a likeness of Marigold, but it had a different name. Right. And they had, the, they had similar concepts, the Storytime Mouse and the Storytime Clock, I believe, were a part yeah. of it. And, and, and like Polka Dot Door, it was very gentle, it was very calm, mm -hmm. it wasn't fast-paced yeah. like mm -hmm. Sesame like Street. Like Sesame Street, right. But, um, but like you said, you know, I, I believe it was Dodie Robb who invented Polka Dot, uh, Polka Roo, and, and oh, all, but, these, yeah. all these unique aspects right. that kind of have made it, yeah. made it Canadian. Okay. Well, you mentioned another name. Um, tell me a little bit about Vera Good. 
Good and her influence? Well, Vera Good was a, a very excellent educator. She, she, came, she had her doctorate in, in education and, and she, she came in and, and that was her, her, her vision of trying to produce programs to teach teachers how to teach. And that was not right. making programs for children, but making programs for the teachers. Right. And that's what and Ted Coney Bear worked for her, as did Terry Bamford. Okay. And so those two people reported to her. Uh, but I, I, I found her very nice to be with, but I, I really didn't find her uh, helpful to be and, and on the technical part, or sure, because your experiences were different. That's right, right. Yes, and she she wasn't not like she didn't. I went to the studio all the time. I, I would go in every time every time a show was being shot. I was there at least once a week. You wanted to see how the money was I, being spent. I, I, well, I had <laughs> to do true. that too. I, I the buck stops here. That's right, and I had to defend it at the end of the year when sure. I went up to the board. So so I had to do it. But not only that, I learned so much. And not only that, you 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 meet the the, the camera people, the, all the people mm -hmm. who are involved in what goes into this, and it's it's well worth the person who's at the top to take that time to do. Well, yeah. so many people um, credit you with the ability to manage and inspire and um, hold together a team, and I think what you're saying right now is characteristic of someone who understands that, that you're not just some person in an office on the top telling people what to do, right. but you are down on the ground level understanding the challenges of a floor manager, That's you right. know, so it, I think that brings a unique perspective to you as a boss and no wonder so many people, you know, credit you as being such a great boss is because, you know, you were on set and you did those things. Um, you'd mentioned that you, you, uh, you know, you would have to defend how the money was spent every year. Off the top of your head, were there any shows that you really faced a lot of opposition with, but at the end of the day, they proved to be incredibly successful because you petitioned for them? In most cases, the, the shows turned out to be the way we planned them in the yeah. first place, and they were successful. Uh, they're, they're, well, I'm trying to think of uh, some. There were various shows that had problems as they went along, but uh, yeah, the, the, I think there's the only one, well, were... one show I sent completely back. What was the, the English girl that uh, we used as a freelancer? Susan. Susan. I. She decided to. Uh, do a, a different looking show. It was not a TV Ontario looking show at all because we ours always had kind a of branding. A, a branding, and we had it. There was enough money in the set. There was enough money in the costuming. There was, and so they were doing a music show, which she was doing with Heather, and uh, so the first show I went in to see Heather Conkey. Uh, yes, okay. yes, because Heather is a very good singer as well, and uh, so I. But I looked at the show and I said, I can't accept it. I I want. You were supposed to produce eight shows. I still want eight shows, but you're going to have to throw this one out. So you're mm. going to have to you're going to have to come through with cutting money someplace else. But you're going to have to deliver those eight shows because I have to hand those in, and and they did. Now, did that show was that Music it Box? It, it, yeah. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. And she, what they did is they kind of took away all the set. And it was just kind of blank, blank something that. It didn't look like it would interest children, that they would captivate them. It just looked boring. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, but uh, Susan didn't complain. She, no, she, she, she did. She, she was, went right, went she right back, and, right and, back. And, she, and she and she re, she redid it, and she did a great job. Yeah. Now Heather Conkey really became iconic. When yeah. I think oh, okay. when I think of the personalities on TV Ontario that I remember growing up, it's it's Dear Ann Agnes yes. and Report Canada, Canada yeah. Report yeah. Metric before yeah. then. Um, you know, Heather Conkey seemed to be everywhere, and she was multi multi talented. talented but where, where did she come from? How did she arrive at TV Ontario? Did you? I I don't know because uh, she actually uh, went to a school. She went went through. She wasn't there when I, when I was teaching, but she went to the through the school that I taught at, uh, and 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 she had all those talents even then. I hear she was also. Very, very talented. From well, you know, I found, a, I found a picture of her. Her first job at TV Ontario, I don't know if you know this, was hosting Polka Dot Door. And I, I, have a, I have a picture of her out in the sandbox with Humpty and Dumpty. Oh, is that right? And I she, didn't she know ought, she was in Polka Dot. She ought to be in her 20s. I didn't know it until I saw the picture. And I, I, I sent the picture either. to her and I said, Heather, is this you? And she's like, you know, uh, uh, bashfully, yes, that <laughs> this is me. You yeah. know, wow, where did you find this? And then she was on the Report Canada, which went on every oh day. Oh my goodness, so multiple she, times, oh yeah. yeah. Every day, yeah. They would, pump that, they would pump that in to the classroom, oh, I remember growing day. up. Oh, every day, right, right. 
Yeah. Well, you know, we talked about a couple people here. Uh, who are some other TVO personalities that you enjoyed hiring or getting along with? And of these, which had a lasting impact on you on your personality as an educator? I know you did a lot of the hiring and. Well, but for, first of all, all the. I think I was so lucky. I tell people this all the time. I had great people working for me. They all cared, like the same as I. They knew I wanted it to be perfect. <laughs> I have to say that Ruth cared very, very much about everything she Deeply did. Deeply invested. Yeah. Very much so. And it had, but she also knew what she wanted and what was going to be right. And she was always right, actually, in the end. But she cared, and we knew that. And we all cared. Uh, they, what, I, I don't think I had anybody. I mean, Jennifer was fantastic. Heather was great. Uh, Jed, uh, Clive. I mean, how, how could you not? Mm. But they all wanted to do the best. I mean, I, like I didn't have to convince them to, to make the best show. And in there's the world. a synergy that happens when you're all believing in something and you're That's working true. together. Uh -huh. I think we did work together. The I think power everybody of cared in they the department did. Uh -huh. that the department uh -huh. did well and that well we cared for children and that uh -huh. the result was good. But it was fun for uh, us because we had a creative and stimulating environment to work in. Well, speaking of that environment, Jennifer, tell us. Give us an idea of what the atmosphere of TVO was when you, even when you started there in, in 67, 68. Did it feel like a family? And what exactly were you trying to accomplish? Well, right at the very beginning in 67 when I was there, it was so small. I mean, it was very, very small. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone was concerned as to what television could do. So I wouldn't say that it was a family <coughs> environment. I think that grew as the years went mm -hmm. by and as it expanded. It certainly did become a family. Mm -hmm. Everyone cared not just for your own department, but for the whole right. of, uh, of TVO. What was the second part of your question? We'll have to look. Um, <laughs> what were you What were you trying to accomplish in those early days? What were the you know you were brought in, but what if well, I were I, to look at your you know your job description? What did they want Jennifer Harvey to accomplish? Well, I would be given a, a, a program to do mm -hmm. or a series to do, but it would be related to the school um, the curriculum. And so, therefore, what I had to do was go around. I mean, this was the variety. I used to go to all the, the boards of education, to the consultants in particular, to find out what it was they wanted in that curriculum that we could do on television, which they could not do. And I found that actually quite stimulating because you, you went into, I went into classrooms, I spoke to teachers, absolutely went to OISE, I read up all about uh, the, whatever the curriculum was, the research that had been done on it, until eventually you had to make, what did we call it, a Bible or something of what, what the aim of that program was to be. And that's what I was really concerned, that, that what the teachers wanted for their children in the classroom would be there in the program. As you say, it, programs had to be fun too, but the education had to be buried in it. I've just thought of a little uh, anecdote. I remember I had to go and talk to some teachers about Read Along, and I said to my son, Philip, uh, who was about five or six at the time, I have to go and tell teachers why Read Along's important. And he said, Read Along's not important, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good opening. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, specifically, you know, since, since you've mentioned uh, Read Along, um, what were some of the specific shows that you worked on? Obviously, that was a big one that you both mm -hmm. had a lot of passion for. Read Along, and I know you, you worked on Télé Français. What are, what are some of the other ones that you... I've got a long list there. <laughs> I haven't got it with me. I did uh, a lot of creative writing shows mm -hmm. for um, older, like the you know, grade did, six and seven. You did math one too, didn't you? Oh, I did math, yes. That's right. That wasn't her favorite, but, but no, it was did it I did two well. lots of math shows. Which was that like, Math Patrol or Two no, Plus? No, no, no. It was plus. The Riddle of Wizard's Oak, which was also done in French for French immersion okay. classes. So that was quite a challenge. The Riddle of Wizard's, Wizard's Oak. Oak. Yeah, okay. it was great. And then the last one that I did was Mathica's Math Shop, and that was really a delight where it combined okay. mm. a little um, elf who had to solve problems, usually connected with a fairy tale character. So we amalgamated the uh, fairy stories and the literature with that. Now, we were chatting earlier off camera just how influential Read Along was. And, and I, you know, its influence can't be underestimated. When I was with Bob Dermer, he, he told me stories about kids that would write to him as adults saying that they learned, they had a learning disability, but they learned to mm -hmm. read mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. read along. And I remember we were chatting earlier that you would, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, intentionality in terms of how long the words would be up yes. on the screen mm -hmm. and you were in the editing room counting the seconds. Yes. What, what do you remember about the show and what made it so special? <clears throat> well, I think first of all, it was dealing with the, with the most important uh, 
part of, of schooling for, for children. They, they have to, to learn to read. Uh, but just as an aside, because you mentioned something, but we had adults who were new in, into Canada coming in with a foreign language who watched read along, and that's mm -hmm. how they learned English. Yeah. Wow. And that's for adults. I've heard, I've heard similar stories in terms of not only reading, but social learning from Polka Dot Door. Oh, but people right. Would, mm -hmm. People, immigrants, would watch Polka Dot Door to get a sense on, you know, right. how to interact with people. Right. Mm -hmm. But Read Along Indeed was a special show that you both were involved in. It was probably the biggest seller that uh, TV Air ever had. And read all about it too. That was That's that right, one. yeah. And anything to do with reading, but I think, we, I think they, they started noticing us most with Read Along. And this went to Japan. I had, I mean, I, wow. I mean, it went and to Japan and, and Korea and uh, it was it was an absolutely and definitely all the way through the states and the rest of Canada. So and I think it started in 1975 around around that time. It, yeah, it probably was. Mm -hmm. We well, we did a lot of read-alongs. There 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 was how many series? Three or four? Three, three, oh, three, three. Yes, we did, and then we did more shows in that series. So we I think we we wound up 65 65. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So three uh, three production blocks, and yes. there would have been three, yeah, you know right. 20 or 22 mm -hmm. episodes. Yeah. Wow, yeah. interesting. Uh, Ruth, when, what were your goals when you initiated the children's department at TV Ontario? Obviously, probably handed down, these are some mandates that you want to accomplish, but personally speaking, when, when people, you know, when, when this, these reins were handed to you and you were going to be in charge of the children's department at TV Ontario, what did you want to accomplish? I wanted to help children uh, to do things that they might not be able to do in an, another way. I think, although we care about the, the very bright children, I think we were always working slightly towards the children who were having more problems, who found school more difficult. And if we could bring a new system to them so they could watch, I think that, was, whether it was math or whether it was reading or, or whatever it was, we, wa we wanted to help them to get through school. I mean, because that's a difficult part. And, uh, and all of a sudden, it wasn't a put down. It was fun to watch for these children, and so that, that that was good. They didn't feel that they were any different than the other kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. They were they were not having to in the little side that they would have right. to go and sit in their little group because they were not doing well or, or whatever. They they could sit there and watch through. And if they watched the program more than once, that was okay too mm -hmm. because they they loved watching the shows. And so I think if I think if that was our our purpose was no matter what subject it was was to help children. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's basically it. And hopefully we did a lot of that. I, I think so. Now, yeah. TD Ontario had a unique approach to how they would produce their shows. I know you were chatting and saying how there was a, an educator that was always paired mm -hmm. with a, a producer-director. Can you give me an understanding of how, you know, the journey of a show would take? For instance, maybe a great one to start with, because I think it has a unique story. Today's special. And, and wasn't that the result of some money from a galaxy station that was, there was a grant? It, what's the I backstory think there, there? was some, uh, I, I, I noticed that in your, in your comments, and I, and I actually had forgotten that. But some money did come in. But I think when we saw uh, Clive make the one program, we saw it. The pilot. The pilot, yeah. and how it was going to work. And it was a delight, and it was that was a show going into the home rather than into school. And completely different than how you've done other shows, because I remember Clive telling me, um, he he said he said to you, because uh, you guys had done these ten minute and fifteen minute mm -hmm. and seven minute television shows, and Clive comes to you and said, I want to do a children's show. I want to have the best of the best on it. I want it to be twenty eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And and uh, he recalls that the first time there being a little opposition, but then you just got behind him and petitioned right. to to the administration. Well, first of all, a Clive is. is <coughs> I mean, as all the people who worked in my section were very, he was very capable. Mm -hmm. He was multi-talented too. Mm -hmm. So he wrote the music and he came up with the concept and uh, brilliant concept. And, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I mean, I saw the concept and, and uh, I knew he could write the music, and uh, and he hired great people. Uh, uh, so Green and uh, and Jeff Hissel were fantastic. Both extremely talented mm -hmm. people who were also known to us from other television, yeah. uh, being yeah. on commercial t uh, television. And uh, so it, it just started. I mean, and, and then, I mean, I was going into the studio quite frequently mm. uh, because it was the, the beginning. But I could see that it was coming together. And the people, I think when you walk into the studio, you, you feel an atmosphere, don't mm -hmm. you? That mm -hmm. there's an atmosphere that people are really loving doing this or that the, 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 the 
camera guys are thinking this is not very good or this is really good, <laughs> and and, and you, you 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 picked that right away with today's special that like, we were on the right track. Why, and why, do you, was, why yeah. do so many people love and remember that show so fondly? No matter no matter who you ask, if they grew up in Ontario, you know even yeah. uh, even our cameraman here today, Tyler, you know remembers today's special, mm -hmm. right? Like it's just no yeah. matter where you go, people from Ontario especially, but also it was shown in the states. That, what was it about the show that resonated with so many kids? Well, partly, I, 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 Jeff, I, Jeff and Doreen were, 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 were fantastic and they were very talented. There was a lot of good music in it, and so music was there. It had a lot of humor in it as well, yeah. and kids love that. Uh, so, I mean, it, it had all the, um, all the, the pieces that go into a good television program. Mm -hmm. Really, basically, that's it. And and their their parents like watching it too. Sure. It was not too childlike that it, it was not watched by their parents. So the parents like. So that's where I mean, some of the messages are probably coming from from parents uh, that uh, the kids watch and they they were always allowed to watch it because it was, it was a, safe. <laughs> that's, it was, yeah, that's yeah. right. But my memory is that yeah. it always came on before Doctor Who, and I think that's how I actually got. <laughs> you know, I'd be watching this very tame child show, and then suddenly there's this face coming at me in the intro <laughs> right. to Doctor Who yeah, out of space, right. and it'd be. Yeah. Be, be freaked out. Um, you know, uh, one of the writers for today's special, Jed Mackay, mm -hmm. um, jokes and says he was the writer that wrote the doom and gloom episodes. And I think one of the things <laughs> that, that today's special did was it covered a lot of ground on subjects like yeah. death and yeah. alcoholism. That's right. and, and, and that was, you know, probably to some degree taboo, at least in that, children's that, education. Mm -hmm. um, uh, question for you, Jennifer. We, we talked uh, a little bit about how shows are shaped. Um, and you were a producer director. Uh, tell us a little bit of a journey of a show. Um, obviously, today's special was unique, but tell us about a journey of an educational show in terms of how it would first come to your table and wh wh at what stage of the show would you be involved in? What journey does a show take from being created to actually being produced during well, the time? I was quite lucky that I was through all the aspects of mm. it, really, wasn't I? As I say, I was ringing for schools. I told you that I, my first part was to do a lot of research to find out exactly what the, um, the educators wanted. Then I had to produce some sort of document which would, would go to the writers to tell them this is the kind of educational content that needs to come out, this is what we want to get from it, and then they would turn it around. And Ruth's very good actually at, at seeing how to turn it around, much better than I ever was, but the writers were fantastic. They mm -hmm. would bring in a script. So then I would work through all the scripts. I mean, the scripts would come in, and basically we would do a lot together because you I wanted sat, to be sure. I went well. through, not just yours, but everybody's, I, everybody's yes, I she sat did. at every script. Right. Yes. Meeting. So you right. both both must have some critical thinking skills because I'm sure that's the stage where you say this isn't going to work. This isn't right. you know. Right. Right. We have to, and, and quite often it was like an argument with a writer, but they usually came around. Yes, they believed us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end, it had the education in a sense had to come through on a on a school show. So they had to mm. realize right. that they mm. somehow or other had to turn it around. And they were really very clever. So then we would get all the scripts. Then there would be a director, usually appointed, you would appoint mm -hmm. a director, mm -hmm. sort of part way through so that they came in on the mm -hmm. scripts. Because they gave, obviously, they had to direct those scripts. Mm -hmm. They had to know. And I would be overseeing that, that as well. Mm -hmm. And then the, I personally, because I was certainly not a director, was quite content if I had a good one for them to present how they were going to do it. I was involved all the time, though, on the set design and the costuming. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, that's right. What were some of your most enjoyable sets and costumes to have a... a to, well, the Riddle of Wizards role? Oak was great. great. The whole of um, 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 Read All About It was terrific, wasn't it? And Massacre, had, I think, the And we had a one. terrific designer on yes, staff. Chris Aby. Chris Aby. Yes. And, and we could go and ask him for anything. anything. And he could... He could Probably on a shoestring budget too, right? Well, that's true. Well, we told. I mean, he would be given that amount of money. I mean, we say they can't cost more than this. Yeah. Uh, and he would come through. And, and the, the other thing that always amazed me was the people who did all the stuff. voices. No, the the other things, the like the like just the, the props. Oh yeah, the, the props. All, all the yes. tiny props yes. that go. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they make a show sometimes. Absolutely. Though, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very very important. And we had great people who would, you'd think, oh, they'll never find that. And they'd come back in with something absolutely perfect. Mm. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. I was involved all the time with mm. the, yeah, how the production was going to go, mm. and I was certainly in the, in the studio the whole time. Mm. The other thing that I thought was fascinating was finding voices for characters. Mm. That's true, too. The puppets. Yeah, that right. was really interesting. Mm. And then afterwards, of course, I was involved with the editing. Usually the, the 
you, uh, the director would edit, and then I would go in and look at it and say what I liked and I didn't like, and you would see mm. it too, and we'd sort of shape it a little bit. Amazing, of course, what editing can do, and then the Absolutely. music afterwards. So, I mean, I was very fortunate. I went through the whole gamut, and then I was involved in writing originally the teacher's guides myself, and then actually uh, hiring people to do it, but mm -hmm. supervising it, because teachers aren't always the best writers, and having been a teacher, I knew how it had to be done in the classroom, and then presenting to the, to the teachers on, on uh, conferences and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So it was interesting, the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. Ruth, you were the executive producer on most of these shows. What does an executive producer do? Obviously, there's a lot of administration. Um, what were some of the challenges of that role as well? Well, first of all, uh, I was told at the beginning of the year, this is how much money you're going to have. <laughs> and that was always a That determines a lot already. Because you always wanted more. But anyway, sure. you, you, you lived with what, what they were going to give to you. So, And then I would decide what, what the topics should be, whether uh, we have math now for grade four or five, or so now we have to go into something else. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make sure that we were covering all topics and all subjects, and that we were adding adding to some of the things that had been started before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we had to continue on because we did so many the, that year or so we could only, we had only enough money to do that many, but we needed some more, so mm -hmm. we would, would add to it. And I had to make sure that they all stayed on budget. <laughs> and they were all very good. I, I, was, I had the greatest team up there. I, I did. They, they, they knew what the rules were, and they tried to make it the best, absolutely best. And I think, if anything, I had a lot of perfectionists who worked for, work for me because they knew that's what I wanted. So, <laughs> But anyway, nevertheless, it, it, was, uh, it was great. And I think it was, I was just thinking of Jeremy because he, he, he was like a perfectionist. Yeah. Jeremy Pollock? Yes, yes. right. Yeah. He, he, he definitely, uh, uh, he, he wanted things perfect. And he did read all about it, about it didn't yes. he? Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, and, and Timothy Pilgrim and, and the, sure. some, some yeah. of those shows. But he was very, very, well, all of them yeah. wanted to devote to doing the best job, the best job they possibly mm. could, and I had that's the kind of people I had working for me, so that was easy. But I very seldom, very seldom, at the end of the year, uh, found that anybody went over budget. Mm. They all delivered the number of shows I told them to deliver. <laughs> I mean, and the. The uh, guides were all yeah. were, were by were the written. educators were written and 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 it, I, I very very seldom had to be and then because I had to go up and present what our goals were and what we achieved to the board and uh, and uh, I always came in they always said that every, like children always came in perfectly <laughs> because I had all these great people working for me. Too. Well, that leads yeah. me to my next question. Many uh, that I've spoken to have regarded you as an advocate between. Uh, the production crew, the creators, uh, the producers, and the administration. Did you see yourself as someone in that role that had to go to bat and, and, and convince people that some of these shows were worth doing and worth happening? Some, some, sometimes, right. I, I think it, once we did things and we started to get comments, good comments from the outside, uh -huh. it became much easier. Right. And so every time I went, every year I went up, it became a little bit easier. And they began to understand that I did know something about education, and I could back it up, and uh, so that they, they would believe. I, mean, I didn't have to convince them anymore. They would just believe if I said, "This is what we're going to do, and this, these are the objectives of the show: to do this, 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 and this." And at the end of the year, I could say, "Yes, we achieved all those objectives. We did this, and and uh, we have had." I, take up letters that we got <laughs> could, could read a few lines for it so that they know that that's what was happening so it was kind of and after a while it was really quite quite simple because they believed we were going to come through uh, also it was good that we had such a claim from the states but that's true the schools, really, that's true right. we really did uh -huh. a lot of the um, states bought our programming and, mm -hmm. used it and, uh, and the different um, boards of education in the provinces I know of Alberta access Alberta yes. I know, yes. oh, yeah, in British Alberta. Columbia right. as well oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure that the the synergy that was coming from the country as a whole um, I, I forget who I was talking to but he went to some kind of uh, national conference and he it was Jed Mackay and he, he was unaware of the influence TV Ontario was having and he went to this conference and there were people from the states there and they go oh, you're from TV yeah, Ontario. Right. Oh well, my! True. Oh my goodness! How do you work. how do you do it? Oh. You know, they were they were fascinated just because they, they looked to you guys we, as the cream of the crop. 
They thought they so. Mm -hmm. I was hired as, as a consultant to do a lot of their shows. Absolutely. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. And of course, the stories abroad, uh, you told me the one of the person down, I think, in Maine, who uh, would buy, a uh, program director, would buy anything sight unseen if it had Ruth Vernon's name as the producer. <laughs> well, that's what Ryan, Ryan, Ryan I came back with that. Okay, that story. He, he, he told Ran I did. Okay. And that's the best thing that could have happened because having that, when sure. I went up to ask for, for money, for money yeah. <laughs> it was really good, yes. Who were uh, some of the first people that you hired to work in your children's department? Actually, a, a lot of the people were already there, uh, like Jennifer was there. Uh -huh. uh, did you hire Clive Vanderberg? No, he was there. He, okay. he was there. He, he had been hired to, to work on Teacher's Ed, okay. which probably bored him out of his mind because he was, <laughs> he was very creative and wanted to do more. But I got him, uh, uh, okay. and, and Ted, uh, and I, I, hired, I hired Milton. Milton was, came in as an educator. Milton right. Vanderbeek? Yeah. Okay. He, he came in as, a, as an educator, but he was extremely Technically minded. I mean, he, could, he could fix any computer yes. in the whole place. Really? The, the computer people upstairs came down to ask Milton how to, what to do. Now, didn't they, he do the body works? Yes, yes, he did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of things. And I'm the one, like he put it in his, in his letter when I, when I left, that uh, he never, he, he was afraid to try to produce. He was mm. the educator. And I kept telling him, no, I know you can do it. Mm. I'm positive. You realize his potential. Yeah, I, because he was so tech. I thought, he's not going to have any trouble in the studio. Oh. He knows exactly what he's going to do. And so he, he find, I, it was a social studies thing, and, and he came up with the concept, and that was fine. I said, and you're going to do it. And he says, well, you'll then do it. So I just kept saying, and he showed me everything. <laughs> but he, he, was, he was great. He went into the studio, and he just, he could do it, you know. Yeah. So he, he, I did hire him, and he stayed, and he was so thankful that I did, because he loved to do it, mm. too. Once, once he got in there, he loved to be able to do both, yeah, so. Now, during your, your guys' time at TV Ontario, or you, you ladies' time at TV <laughs> Ontario, you were involved with so many shows. If you were to kind of cherry pick the ones that you feel were the landmark shows that resonated with the masses, which shows would they be, whether you worked on them or not? Well, the read the reading series were yeah, obviously the read along was a read along. Big, yes, a, a, one read the, all about. Yeah, yeah. it was the, the biggest seller that we ever we ever did. From my point of view, from the schools, I think Telefrancais and oh, all right. the French programming that we did, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it because I like French anyway. She's excellent. In French. <laughs> and I had the most fabulous consultant. I couldn't have done it without him. I, I often think maybe I don't have all that many gifts, but one gift is to be able to choose the right person to help me out mm -hmm. in things. And yep. I always mm -hmm. got good consultants. Mm -hmm. That's Every single show, and Jean Rassico was marvelous, mm -hmm. and they made a lot of difference because French, you know, the bilingual thing right. here was sure. important then. Um, but all of them, we yeah. Well, today's special was a, 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 yes. a, a, a very good show that got a lot of attention, and that sold around the world too, right? right? Exactly. <coughs> Nickelodeon, I think, yeah, picked yeah, it uh -huh. up in the states. Uh, yes, it did. Yes. Uh -huh. But I think oh, the, well, was the book we did the uh, Tales from the Magic Library. I did book mice. Yeah, yeah, yeah turned well, into book mice. No, there's Tales from the Magic Library that started first of all for the schools. Okay. And then Jeremy took it over to make it book, book mice, mice for the, yeah. for the yeah. outer okay. school. And book mice is, is was a great series too. Yes, yeah, he took yeah. the same puppets. Actually, That's right. The right. Yeah. yeah, I think Nina Keel yes. was telling That's me. That's right. Yes. Yes. But yeah. it originally started as introducing children to stories, and we would leave it open ended, and they'd then have to read the book. Now, Clive Vanderberg told me a story and he couldn't remember the series, but he said the Sam Crenshaw puppet that was used in today's special was part of another series that only a pilot was made of and that never went to air. Does that ring a faint bell? <laughs> He remembers it, who, who know, but again, if it was something that never went to air, I'll you know. I'll have to ask him, because I can't, I can't yeah. remember. And I thought that was interesting, yeah. um, that that puppet had a previous life. Yeah, poor guy. Which, uh, <laughs> which shows carried some of the, the greatest challenges? The Riddle of Wizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a math series. Uh, oh dear, math is not my strong point. The only advantage of my being involved with it was that I could never understand it the way math people understand things. Sure. So if I could understand it, then it was okay. But it had a shaky start, didn't it, yeah. at the very beginning with um, both the scripts and uh, the production but until Ted Regan came in and then that uh, helped. But it was also being done in French and that was a big challenge. All yeah. right, as we continue along, what are some of your favorite uh, shows or any favorite episodes that you remember from the shows that you guys worked on? I don't really know that I can well, answer I, that question. One, one episode, uh, 
Well, I remember, I mean, basically the first one was, was boot. Oh. I am a B-O-O-G, and right. there was a reason for that. But I also remember oh, yeah. Telefrancais because we had a pineapple with the Oh, yeah, Anana. Anana, yes. yeah. Je suis an Anana. And I mean, it was just so dramatic as they came in. And it was a good start. <laughs> Which people at TV Ontario had a had a personal impact on you? Obviously, you worked with a lot of people, and uh, you know, going to work, many probably were thought as colleagues. But were there any that had a personal impact on either of you, and were there any that were mentors to you while you were there? We had people who uh, edited our guides, and I, I, I think like our guides had to be just as perfect as as, as thing. Everything had to be, and I think working with a, a lot of those people uh, was great. I mean, they they made us recognize or what we were doing that had to be perfect and, and written well mm. and uh, I think Jennifer and I kind of like writing so we really didn't mind it too much but uh, I, I think that that was one of the one of the things that uh, I, I remember and the marketing people that went with me when I had to go down I had to do the spiel all the time when right we, when I, the pitch the, the, yeah the marketing people didn't want to do that so they dragged me down all the time uh, but they did care and, and, and mm. they, they were good at going going around and making sure that they followed through on, on making the sale and so uh, I got to have quite a few friends from from marketing because we traveled mm. together quite a bit well, so, that's good so that was nice uh, I'm, I'm trying to think because there were other people. Like, uh, well, our research people were fantastic. Oh yeah. Remember the, what was the girl's name? That she had she had research piled up in a wagon. No a, way. K something or other. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she has so much. She has. Uh, but we had. Uh, Office uh, research. Yes. And we had a private researcher. Remember we had that young. He was just coming out of. Uh, University on, on it, and he was our. We had him for for, for really long, long all the time. Ken O'Brien. No, 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 he was he was there. He was the, the yeah. one who decided. Oh yes, the other the, the young Japanese, fellow. Was he? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And he went to Alberta or something. Yes, I yes, remember. yeah. And I think that's what was unique about TVO is that the shows were so researched. I remember talking oh, with Clive fantastic. Vandenberg and just mm -hmm. saying like everything. The reason why you know, these resonated with kids is because they were brought, and from what I understand too, you would screen them in front of children, oh, yeah. and, oh, yes. and, and you would look for their reactions right. and understand oh. what their eyes were drawn That's to right. and make decisions based uh -huh. on that information, but which is which is incredible when you think about it. This Ken O'Brien, he was probably the one who told us most well, about how to put the words on the screen. Right. He told us to bring them in yes. from the, the yeah. left or the right and leave it there and not to do this and not right. to do that. Uh, I mean, he, he, he would probably <coughs> gave us the most of those. I can remember in, in Read Along in particular, we had the screen divided into four. There was a little mm -hmm. um, quiz, you know, what rhymes with mm -hmm. rice, right. rice or right. something. And the answer would come up. And they, the producer or the directors wanted to vary where the answer came one time it would come up on the right hand side of the screen the next time the answer down on the left just for variety but when we tested it with children or they did they discovered that it wasn't a good idea because the kids were used to it in the beginning to have it on the right hand side and so they missed the second one because they were looking up there right, and yeah. right. so we had to put it all in the mm. same place there were little details mm -hmm. like that mm. that, that really made a difference yeah. yes now Ruth, help us understand some of the changes that happened in TV Ontario in the mid-90s that resulted them no longer producing shows in-house. You know, for 20 years they did this, but then there were some big changes in the 1990s. Can you tell us a little bit about those changes and, and how they all came about? Well, unfortunately, the uh, Ontario government was starting to... The money was going down in the Ontario government, the way it is right now, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we started not to have the money to produce the shows mm. that were there before and uh, so that started to go down and uh, we were on there we were trying to get money donated and we were still getting money and when we answered the phones it was coming in for children's programs. The membership but, drives. The membership and they drives. weren't always a part of TV Ontario didn't they start doing them in the 80s is that's that right. correct? That's yeah. right yeah and uh, basically children's brought in a lot of money. I can uh, imagine. Yeah, because we were probably, and then the parents wanted their children to have that kind of show. Well, I, I remember uh -huh. reading the stats, like, you guys had, the, like, the number one time slot in Ontario around dinner time. That's You know, did. Polka Dot Door and Today's mm -hmm. Special. Like, that's incredible when mm -hmm. you think about it. But the focus started to change a little bit, to be honest, at TVO, didn't it? Like it did, and I'm trying to think of what well, caused it, though. I think it was, oh, um, we lost we were off ran we're ride. Ride, yes. We were talking about the changes that were happening in the 1990s, and you were sharing a little bit with the the, the cutting of the funding and and what. But help us understand a little bit more 
uh, what led to the demise, I guess, of, of the shows stopped being produced in-house. Well, also, uh, Jennifer and I were just talking, the uh, computers started to come into it, and they decided that's what they were going to focus on, putting out computer programs and not television programs. Mm. So a lot of the money that was going into, uh, my, like, had I stayed, uh, the budget was dropping drastically uh, in either the children's programming. So, because it was going into the person who now was in charge of, uh, over us, uh, we're thinking it, computers was the new, the new way of life. And, uh, and wasn't there a reasoning that they could take the amount of money that they'd spend on a television show and say, well, we can buy, we can spread this money out more if we buy from other people and, and buy the rights to broadcast instead of putting it all into... Well, that's okay for the children, the children at home programs, but you really couldn't buy educational programs. That's true. So they were, they were not there to buy. And so that's where they were going, saying, well, we're putting our money into computers, and that's how we'll teach the children now, through the computer. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, 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 that, that happened. And, and did, the people were changing jobs, too, and we had new people in a lot of... A lot of at the top and even just on top of us, and the money was now going in a very different direction. Why do you think, as we wrap up, why do you think these shows are so memorable? Why do you think they stick with people and the power of nostalgia? What what is it about these shows that sticks with people? I think that everybody who worked on them, that is everybody, mm -hmm. cared, mm -hmm. and because. We cared, like when we went, as Jennifer said, she was in the studio, and the directors in the studio, and they cared, and they wanted the best. They didn't want to be any less than perfect. And I think it, it, it paid off. I think mm. it, it just paid off that people cared so much, and they cared about the, the people who were going to be watching it. They cared about kids, and a lot of them didn't have any children. I mean, they were young, and they didn't have children, but they, still, they, they, they loved they would love the thought that they were helping children. Yeah, certainly uh, prudent. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Question for both of you. When you look back at your t uh, TV Ontario career, what are you most proud of, and would you have done anything differently? I think it's just the same as Ruth said. We did feel we were making a difference to children mm -hmm. and helping teachers in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of satisfaction yeah. in that. Associated with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also it was fun for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was stressful at times, but it was right. fun too. Mm -hmm. And I think we had... Uh, a good group. Oh yeah. Like a, the fact that we all had a weird sense of humor. Sure. <laughs> and we all we all cared that we did the best, and we're, our offices were all yes. together too. So that, like, if if you ran into a slight problem, you could run in next door, and and and, and if you're having a down day or something, you could uh, run. In. Yeah. So I think I think all of those things. I think it's it the was people. a relaxed. Yeah. It yeah. was a relaxed atmosphere, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody worked hard. Mm -hmm. But you were free to get up and go and have a chat or something if you wanted, which I don't think is the case uh, nowadays. No, probably not. Probably not. No, mm -hmm. no, that's right. So uh, it was a relaxed and stimulating uh, environment. And I, think, I mean, I, I, I did choose to leave. Uh, I was not. I chose to leave because I could see where it was going, mm -hmm. and it was not going to make me happy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was not going to meet my standards. <laughs> right. And uh, so I saw. When, like the boss that we had all this time that was great, like Alpha Zan, uh, retired, and so a new person came in, uh, and the, I sh shouldn't say this probably on tape, but, but a lot of us went up to try to deter, and Clive was one of them, uh, that from happening, and we tried to make changes, but mm -hmm. unfortunately he'd already been hired, and we right. didn't know that, but, but he'd right. already been given the job. It's a different and, season, different and, direction. And a different person uh, mm -hmm. who didn't really care whether we did it well or not, or right. didn't care right. uh, one bit. Uh, so we, I thought that was the end. I didn't want to leave with that bad taste in my mouth, right. so, so I wrote my resignation. My I did. Mm -hmm. Was that hard? Uh, well, it wasn't. I went out of a, one of the meetings that uh, we'd had of the, in the group with the, new, with the new leader, and I went home, and it was a Christmas, and I thought, I don't not want this. I don't think I'm going to be able to stand mm -hmm. it. Our standards are going to go down, and, mm -hmm. and none of us are going to really like it. No, Clive left. Sense. Clive left even before I did, and he went down to teach at Ryerson. He, he, he got, but he wasn't going to stay either, and uh, so we just kind of knew 
that it was not going to meet our standards anymore. And did you leave around the same time as well? I think I left too. Well, I didn't leave. I was <laughs> one of the, gr the group that got pushed out. There were about oh, 100 I see. of us, I think. Uh, it was an awful lot, lot of people yeah, yeah. who were let go in 1995. Jeremy, Jeremy yeah, yeah, was one. Yeah, yeah, yes, quite yeah. a number. But um, by that time, too, I was not enjoying it. Yeah. No, Things had changed so much. Yes, and I was able different. to leave. So that and was Jeremy why. hated it, too. Yes. yes. They had a couple, yeah, about a couple of years that were really miserable. Because yeah. they kept telling them they had to go and find the money. There was no money inside. But, I mean, you, if you go asking for money, you have to go out with money in your pocket. That's right. And, and so somebody else is going to come in. And exactly. Go in, but they, they, they were given nothing. I mean, yeah, it was the whole idea that you needed a partner, but nobody told you how to get a partner. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a challenge. We weren't really. No, it was, it was yeah. Well, I think the work that you did do during the times that it was enjoyable, I know that it has in, fa in fact impacted so many people. And I know a lot of people are going to be interesting, uh, interested to watch this interview and to know that you were two of the ladies behind the scenes that really made this happen. And so many have been unknowingly influenced by your impact. You have literally spent your professional careers educating the masses. And I think that's an incredible testament to how you spent your lives and uh, to the people that you are. And I just want to personally thank you for your investment, not only in Canadian culture, but um, this has been very enjoyable for me. And I know there's lots of people out there that, um, that appreciate the hard work that you ladies put into these shows to really educate a country and to you know, educate millions when you think about that. And I think that's an incredible way to spend your life. It was a great team effort. It, it was. And thank you for caring that, yes. that we did it. Because because it's nice about this many years later, mm -hmm. somebody still notices, which is yes. wonderful. Yeah, so that's great. Well, this has been great. And I hope, I wish you a very happy new year. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for spending time with You're us today. Oh, well, thanks. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.